Good day and welcome to another Monday segment of A Week at the Plot and this is our 52nd week of A Week at the Plot. Who would have thought it? That's incredible. Anyway, more of that later in the week. So I saw a dandelion as I was coming to the plot that had gone to seed. So I went over to our wildlife area and I did the... <sighs> it took three blows, so that's three o'clock, obviously. And it was about accurate. It was about half past, tw almost half past three. So it was pretty accurate. There we are. Dandelion clocks are accurate. And then what I did is I've, I've come back and where I know the dandelions have closed up to turn to seed, to start that process of becoming seed to then reopen as that wonderful dandelion clock, I've deadheaded the dandelions. So I haven't deadheaded the ones that are open and in full sunshine because those are still feeding the birds. Um, feeding the bees rather, not well, actually, if they feed the bees and pollinators, they may be feeding the birds as well, but feeding the bees and other pollinators. So I haven't taken the ones that are open. I've taken the ones that have closed up so that they are becoming, they closed up so that they can become the seed and then they'll open up and give us that fabulous frothy dandelion head. So what am I going to do now? I'm just going to do a little bit of seed sowing. This time it's with Giant of Italy, Giant of Italy, that's my, my parsley. It's with Russian giant sunflowers and I'm just going to put these actually I'm going to put these into modules. That's what I'm going to do. I've not done them in modules before. I've got a large, I've got a tray of large modules spare. So yeah, I'm going to put some of these into modules and get on and do it. These are our Russian giant sunflower seeds. And now I'm just going to push in only about an inch. I'm never too worried about the depth of this type of seed. It's quite big. I know where my centre of my modules are. There we are, that's those sewn. I've got a few there. Just move that over. I don't seem to have much compost here. I've got enough. Yeah, I've got enough. Just scruff up the surface. You know I like doing that. Mainly because I find water doesn't puddle. And now I'm just going to give these a water and I'm actually going to leave them outside. Right. That'll do. I'll keep on top of them with watering because it looks as though we're going to be having some warm days and dry days. We'll continue and then we'll see whether these pop up within a week or so. Fingers crossed. Okay, quick one for today. I'll leave it there and I'll see you again tomorrow for another A Week at the Plot. Bye.
Good day. Good day. It is a fabulous spring day today. Really quite warm. We're going to get up to about 17 or 18 degrees where we are. Overnight tomorrow night, it looks as though it's going to be one degree, but we certainly got no zero degrees forecast now for, well, forecast, full stop, you know, fingers crossed. So that's now making me start to think about the direct sowing of beans and a few other things, including our parsnips and carrots, which I hope to get on with this week. One other thing that I hope to get on with this week was the vinyl bed. But yesterday I twinged my back. I was trying to think where I twinged it. I don't mean where in my back I twinged it, but what had occurred that had made me twinge my back. And I realised there was a, when I was going home yesterday, there was a, a woman who, her well, a mum whose child had cycled off and not stopped and she was sort of wondering where he was and I was sort of oh he's over there he's over there he's gone down that road but what I did is I twisted rather than turned my body and I think that twisting movement that sharp twisting movement to show her this this you know anxious mum where her son was just that twist I think did my back in a bit so um today and maybe for the rest of the week is going to be more about gentle jobs that need to be done. Obviously, there's a lot of watering that needs to be done. The polytunnel, we're now at that stage where the polytunnel needs to be opened in the morning and at the moment closed at night. I think when we get into mid-May, I'll be leaving it permanently open. Um, so yeah watering and then Erica from Erica's Little Welsh Garden she reminded me or not reminded me she said in one of her posts which reminded me to deadhead our daffodils so that they don't when the flower has gone over they don't go to produce seed and instead they fatten up the bulb below so as this is their first year I've taken all of the heads off, all of the dead heads off the daffodils and deadheaded them so that the bulb fattens up. So thanks very much for that tip, Erica. The other thing that I noticed when I was doing that is in Jack's trough, some of the tulips are coming out, um, yellow tulips. So that's absolutely gorgeous, which is, is great. Gosh, there's a big plane going over. Let me just pause you for a moment. So I'm really happy that Jax's trough is coming back to colour. And of course, we sowed the sunflowers yesterday. So maybe some of those can go into that trough a bit later on in a, in a couple of months. And also, I noticed a magpie going for some of our tadpoles. I think he or she was going for the tadpoles. It could be that the magpie was actually drinking through the mesh that is on top of our tadpole basin, but it's so much easier to, to drink from the basin next door, which has no mesh and no tadpoles in it. So I'm wondering whether the magpie was saying, mmm, tadpoles, yum, breakfast. So what I have done is I've used a mushroom tray that we're not using at the moment and I've turned it upside down and put it on top of the metal mesh so that no magpie has got the neck length, if you see what I mean, to, to get under there and in there. So, yeah, hopefully the, because, you know, the, mag, the tadpoles have been there for a while. I want the magpies still to drink as I want the, our foxes here still to drink. But I do want those magpies, no, those tadpoles, those tadpoles. I want the tadpoles to develop into frogs. So fingers crossed on that. So yeah, today is going to be about the jobs where I can do gentle bending. When I'm filling up my watering can from the trough, I'm not filling it fully. Um, I'm just filling it to three quarters because I don't want that to be too heavy. It's better with a, a sore back or it's certainly better for me with a, a sore back 
to do the the gentle jobs of bending and stretching rather than a do nothing and sit around or lie around all day and or b um do lots of active things because i know for me that will just mess up my back even more so i mean don't get me wrong you know i'm in a bit of pain i'm not in chronic pain at all but i know that i need to think about my back because it is a weak spot for me. I carry weight, as you know. So my knees and my the, the bottom of my back, um, the bottom of my spine, you know, I need to be careful in those areas. I mean, we need to be careful in all the areas, but I know that because of the extra weight that I carry, I need to, to think about my knees and think about my back. So I'm just going to potter maybe now for another hour. I've done some watering. Certainly with the plants that I planted out the other day, so with the beetroot, with the chard, with the perpetual spinach and with the turnips, what I'm going to be doing is now I have watered them all and giving them all a good water, I'm going to wait about 30 minutes and do that all again. When you are watering your plants, it's better to water them thoroughly and water them every, you know, three days or so than it is to give them little and often. Little and often is, is something that when you've got plants in the ground outside, it's not good to do with watering. Give them a good soaking and then let them be for, for you know, a good few days. So, yeah, soaking, leave them for a few days, give them another soaking. So that's what I'm going to get on and do now. And I also have some dock plants. So many of you may know dock leaves and nettles. Dock leaves very often grow by nettles because they counteract the, the stinging of nettles, or they supposedly do. Maybe that rubbing action is what does that. But I was given some dock plants the other day, and I do need to pop those up. So I'm going to be back later to do that, I think. I won't be putting them into any of our beds because they're not plants to go in beds. But around the compost bin, there's going to be some areas there. And if I've got nettles there and comfrey there, good idea to have dock leaves there as well. So that if I do sting myself, I can just grab a dock leaf and rub my, you know, rub the sting. Also, we've got the wildlife area that I will show you at some point, um, not on our plot, but on the bottom of the allotment. Somebody's done a fantastic job there developing uh, um, a number of pools that run into each other. Really wonderful wildlife area. So I think some of those dock leaves will go down there as well because they're, they're you know, they're wildflowers and uh, are terrific. They came out of a person's plot a couple of days ago so they've been sitting in water and are quite happy doing that for the time being right i'm going to get on with watering and i hope whatever you're doing today you have a good day too bye good day these are three of our dahlias we've got two elsewhere and i'm just going to pop them into this tray after these had flowered last year we deadheaded them so that there were no seeds forming in the flower heads that may have been pollinated and let the foliage die back then we turned them upside down and left them over winter like that the reason we did that is, oh, I've got a robin at my feet. Oh. The reason we did that is that's exactly what a fellow plot holder here does with her dahlias in tubs each year. And when you turn them upside down, it, it lets the compost dry out, which this has done. And we've kept them protected in the shed over winter, so they haven't been bitten by frost when we turned them the right way up which was about 10 days ago I put my fingers down and felt the tubers so the tubers were still nice and hard which is great and then 
we had to leave them like that for, for seven to 10 days, which we now have done. And now I'm adding water. This tray is on a slight slant, but that's okay. Well, it's going to go on the lower shelf anyway. So there's now about an inch of water maybe a bit more maybe once that sits level an inch and a half of water in there and i'm going to sit this whole tray with these in and the water obviously on the bottom shelf of our potting bench here and after a day of sitting there hopefully it will have soaked each pot will have soaked up a whole load of water and then I'm going to drain the tray and then just top up as I feel the dahlia needs topping up and then once the first shoots start to appear apparently that's when I give it a little bit of feed or give each of them a little bit of feed so yeah, that's it for our dahlias for the time being. Let's see how they do later on. Whilst we're in here, I thought we'd just have a look at the three types of kale seedlings we've got going at the moment. This is dazzling blue kale. Then in the middle we have Portuguese cabbage. And then on this end we've got Nero di Toscana. And you can see that the Portuguese cabbage in the middle has a much bigger cotyledon leaf and much paler than the two kales on either side. I just find things like that really interesting. And this one really seems to be developing the true leaves, the shape of the true leaves. You can even see at the back here. And we have a few smaller ones coming already here. But Oh yeah, we do. Look, there's there's ones there of true leaves. So yeah, they're all developing. I think we're going to be doing some pricking out. And I also think we're going to be doing some gifting of seedlings. But that will be for another day. I will leave it there. Oh, I've just spotted the lettuce seedlings as well. They're looking rather lovely. Anyway, another day. I'll leave it there now and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye. Good day. I have just followed on the video from yesterday by emptying the gravel tray of water that the dahlias were sitting in and replacing the dahlias into the gravel tray and just popping it back on the bottom of the bench. And that started me thinking about benches because at this year there is a call on space. There's going to be less a call on space this year than usual because we're not going to be sowing so many beans in pots. We're going to be direct sowing many more. But what I am going to be doing is these are nigella at the front here. That really should be going in the ground. These are mallow, which will be going into a wildlife area. We've still got our medlar and apple and rose hips at the back. And just over here in the green are hawthorns. 
And then if I spin you round, lift you up a little bit, you can see these. We've got various cuttings of thornless blackberry here. And um, we've got some, uh, what's this, perennial kale that's going to other plot holders are daffodils which i'm going to need to deadhead these as well but i need to start emptying the benches because we're going to need this space very soon one other thing which is just here i'm not sure if you can see but in this green tray this is where we've got our small parsley plants and coriander let me just go over there now so we've got parsley at the front here, coriander and corn salad. And we're going to be treating these a bit like modular sown. So I'm just going to be breaking these up and putting them into various beds. These are the sunflowers that we sowed the other day. But yeah, it's time to start clearing things because we're going to need bench space out here to start hardening things off. I also want to prick out our kale, our brassicas that we saw yesterday, and I think I'll do that tomorrow. But the Brussels sprouts that we've already pricked out and put into modules, they're going to want to come out here certainly in the next week or 10 days to start hardening off. So time to do some clearing. This is a hole that a fox has kindly made. I'm literally going to use the hole to put that nigella into. And look, I've uncovered some seedlings there. I'm not sure what they are. The bed needs a bit of a weed, but we also have some wildflowers in there that we want to keep. After I've done the others, I'm going to give everything a good water. This is the herb bed, always going to be. We've got the mint over there. I'm literally going to just take a chunk of these out and a chunk of the coriander out as well. And then break that up a little bit and just pop them in. Break that up a bit. Put them in. Gosh, there's a big stone. Oh no, it was ground, just dry ground. go around there my shadow's in the way but that's okay Now to water them. Mm. 
there we are a few jobs done today i'm just um pouring myself some tea there's been quite a lot of noise out there today planes going over but it really is a lovely 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 day out there it's warm you can see shirt sleeves or short sleeves rather is what i mean so i've got a t-shirt and this uh, top on and that's been absolutely lovely it really has so the the parsley that we sewed in trays to sort of represent modules or sewn modules we planted those out i think a, a couple of plants from each will survive coriander as well the corn salad i've put in by the chard on the bed near the polytunnel i've put some more coriander and parsley just in the little bed outside the front of the shed here as well not the one by the big raised bed but just in front of the shed the um, nigella that i've put out i've put two by the where the tall they no, not daisies lilies the tree lilies are um because i thought the tree lilies will most probably reach a couple of feet in height this year and the nigella would look lovely underneath that I, there's going to be some calendula under there as well and also some california poppy which will be absolutely lovely there's other things that i need to sort out on the bench as i say i've got rose cuttings um but we are going to have a new fence line at our allotment and what we've decided to do is we're going to plant hedgerow plants and native plants inside the fence line for about a meter so some of those roses that i took as cuttings as you remember they're, they're that lovely pink rambling rose they're going to go in there and will ramble through the um the hedgerow as it grows which will be lovely i want to put a couple in on the plot but i'm not quite sure where i'm going to do that um i'm going to be potting up individually some of the thornless blackberries and also giving some of those away i've already given a few away i'm going to plant one at the base of the pergola is it pergola um though i think i'm going to need to put another structure there because the pergola i do need to mend as as you may remember it's rotten at the base and is a bit wobbly so i need to mend that so i've started making a list again this afternoon a list that it will take me some time to get through my back is improving and i hope by the weekend or by the end of the weekend at least i'll be able to start on one side of the perennial bed and start lifting up that vinyl so yeah jobs to do a few things or my back has really set me back on quite a few things i wanted to do this week but i've still managed to do other things so yeah i've had to swap things around that seems to be the the name of the game at the moment anyway i will leave it there and see you again tomorrow for another segment of a week at the plot and now i'm going to put my sunglasses on and go outside and just sit in my chair and drink my tea see you tomorrow bye Good day. Today we're going to be pricking out and potting up our kale. Now these were sown I think around the 23rd of February and we've got dazzling blue kale at the front, Portuguese cabbage in the middle and then Nero di Toscana at the end. Just like we did with the Brussels sprouts I'm going to be 
pricking them out and putting them up into individual modules that we have, the large modules. But if you wanted to put them into individual pots, obviously you can do that as well. What I am hoping for is 12, or what I want, is at least 12 plants of each. So I think I'm going to be doing 14 plants. So I'm going to start by, I'm actually using a sort of dibber here, by just levering out some of these. Put that over there. And then you can see there I've already got one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm just going to break them up gently, teasing them apart. They're pretty robust. Some will end up with bigger roots than others. I mean, look, that one's got really big root, that one doesn't, but they'll be fine. Use, as I've said before, the cotyledons, which are not these, these are the true leaves. Use these here, the cotyledon, because that's going to be dying away soon anyway. Right, I just drop pointy stick. Now I'm going to pop these up. I had spare modules from the potting up of the Brussels sprouts because I wanted nine Brussels sprouts plants. They're all doing pretty good. And all I'm going to do now, though I'm going to take my gloves off because even though I've got really good gloves, um, I like potting up with my bare hands, which does make them a bit dirty, but there we are. So, right, there's our root ball making a hole. Try and get the bottom bit of root into the base. And then we're just going to really sort of firm it down gently but firmly. And then get more compost and pop it in over there. Planting them quite a bit deeper, as you can see. Let's just do another one. I'll do it at the front here, making a hole in this compost, just multi-purpose compost. Make sure you get to the bottom of that hole. Oh, you can't really see. Firm it in. Add more compost. Let's see if we can do a better one at the front here. So making a hole in that compost, in goes the root, push it down because you don't want any air at the base of that root. You want that root to be surrounded. There we are, maybe just a little in there. Much smaller root here, look, but still same thing right to the bottom. It doesn't matter that they're being buried a little bit deeper, an inch or two deeper than they were. Brassicas don't mind that. Right, I'm going to get on with the rest now. What was that? Dazzling blue kale. So I'm going to carry on with the dazzling blue kale. That's everything pricked out and potted up now. So we've got our Brussels sprouts, which we did a few weeks ago. Then we've got our dazzling blue kale here and here, and then Portuguese cabbage. Portuguese cabbage, Nero di Toscana, and then over here we've got spares as well that I haven't pricked out or potted up. And these are our lettuce, Amish deer tongue and Burpees iceberg. I think this is the Amish deer tongue with a sort of blade tongue-like shape, and this is the iceberg. So as with everything, And they're going to have a good water. Because, you know, we've disturbed the roots. We've, we've taken them out of their, their snug home. 
and now they've got plenty of root space to grow but we want those roots to feel at home and also to have moisture on them so that they know they're going to be okay but also what this watering does is it makes sure that the compost that they're sitting in nestles well along the the roots and that's really important because you want really good root systems if i can just tip this up you can see on the Brussels sprouts, let me pull that forward, you see some of the roots on the Brussels sprouts are beginning to, to come through, just a few. But I know those are going to have really good root systems. Right. And also, I'm going to squish that over there. When you do have spares, make sure you either give them away or continue looking after them you know some of these might not take i think most of them will all of the brussels sprouts have but yeah there we are that's our three types of kale pricked out and potted up into modules as i said earlier if you wanted to do them into individual pots you could do that as well but at this growth stage they need their root space they need space to grow they'll have used up all the nutrition that was in the seed they'll have used up much of the nutrition that was in the seed compost or the compost we used and sowed the seed into and now we're giving them lots and lots of fresh compost with really good nutrition to just carry on growing Right, I'll leave it there now. These are going to stay in the polytunnel for maybe another week or so, and then I'm going to start hardening them off outside. We'll have a look at them then. Bye. Good day. I found these bricks and asked the householder if they wanted them and they said they didn't. There's another barrow load for sure and I'm going to use these to edge our bed extensions which was always my intention once I found some bricks. Here we have the herb bed and I'm going to put bricks along the edges and then do the same with those down there. So all I'm going to do is move soil in from the edge and place bricks on their side right at the edge and that will hopefully mean that the level of the ground is just a bit higher and when I water it doesn't run off because that's what I'm finding here obviously over a year it may settle down but we're going to be adding compost onto these at the end of this growing year so yeah I'm going to get my trowel and just move, I think I'll start with the shorter edges, move the soil in and then place the bricks down. So I've roughly laid out the bricks and now I'm going to move the soil in from the edge and place the bricks down. Let's see how I get on. I sort of did this with the one outside the shed last year, but I think this one is a bit of a bigger job. A 
knocking the camera. I've got a feeling this would be better with the soil wet. Oh, look, plastic. Well, let's just carry on, give it a go. Still got weeds in here, look. Well, we know that. Maybe a bit too deep. Yeah, I think they need to be higher. That's better. Yeah, that just feels better to me. Putting some stones down this side. As I found that helped with the one by the shed. Right. Now I'm going to carry on with these. 41 bricks later and two hours of time and these four bed extensions are now edged with bricks. They've been firmed in with soil but obviously I'm not a bricklayer nor a mason 
over the coming weeks and, and in fact the growing season they will settle and as they settle I might add additional stones underneath to lift some if they fall a little bit or nudge some in so this one here just a bit out of line as you can see I mean it's not bad but just a bit out of line so any like these here I'll most probably tap those in a bit by putting some stones down the inside edge here by banging in stones with a hammer down here it'll push those bricks inwards this one here similar but you know what I'm pretty happy with that and now I'm going to water these top or these first two these as you know have got parsley and coriander in and the mint and then these have got the highly scientific experiment of our loose de ottono broad beans that were sown in different types of cereal cartons from a selection box so yeah i'm going to leave that here today and just do a little bit of judicious watering bye Good day and welcome to this Sunday segment of our 52nd week of A Week at the Plot. So by the time this has been uploaded to Planet Vegetaria and also to YouTube tomorrow, Monday morning, we will have a whole year of A Week at the Plot under our belts, which I think is really quite amazing to be honest i don't often blow my own trumpet i'm an amateur gardener i'm an amateur grower other people know far far more than i do and you know i'm just a bog standard allotment here though i do like to share what i do and that's why i started the series over well i started it on the 25th of april last year which was a saturday so the first week was actually Saturday to the following Sunday. That was the first week at the plot. And I watched it back this morning. <laughs> and, and what a difference a year makes. I mean, my broad beans this year compared to last year are terrible. The Ceanothus, which hasn't even started flowering yet. Last year, it was over. It was past its best. We had Ceanothus snow, as I call it, on the ground because the very pale blue flowers had gone over and fallen to the ground. The apple tree was in absolute full blossom. This year, there's just a couple of blossoms on it. And the ground was by no means as dry as it is this year. When I looked at the ground, there were no cracks and we have where there's open ground, there are cracks here, as you know, because it's been so dry. But yeah, 52 weeks of a week at the plot. That for me, I feel is a personal achievement. When I started this on the 25th of April 2020, which was obviously a month or so into the UK lockdown, I didn't really know what it was going to end up being. And actually, it's ended up being my salvation for this lockdown year. I do not know what I would have done without the allotment. I do not know what I, I would have done without sharing it with, with you. Um, and I don't know what I would have done without sharing it with others. Like Vivi, you know, Vivi has taken part and that's been fabulous. She's been on camera and the times we spent together, like, on the 1st of January, planting those those broad beans, you know, that she, she gave to me. Things like that just 
really stick in your memory. And then also, you know, all of my plot neighbors and site growers who have contributed in their own way. You know, I might have taken a photo of something or some video of something on their plot or they gifted me flowers or eggs. You know, I mean, it's just an it's just it just shows what community is. There's two people walking in now, you know, who got a plot further down and it's always a little wave and a little smile. And yeah, that's that's been my year. Um, going forward, a week at the plot will continue, though I've decided that they're not the uploads are going to be weekly as they have been. But I most probably won't be doing daily videos, which will be going on to Planet Vegetaria. I think what I've done so far has been really informative. I hope you you feel the same. I would like a little bit of space in my life at the moment to do some other things, maybe a bit of writing. I'd love to start the blogging again that I had been doing, um, a Guernsey Gardener in London. So I'm thinking about that. There's also some standalone videos that I want to do, my book reviews and things like that, that I found I haven't had time to do because I'm I'm always ensuring that there's some interest in the in the day for a week at the plot. And yeah, that will that will continue. There'll most probably be a photo each day or there will be on coffee for our coffee uh, supporters and most probably on Planet of Vegetaria as well. When I do do an update from the plot, which will most probably be, you know, a minimum of three times a week, I'll be bringing you along with me. Of course, that will mean that the uploads to YouTube will be a bit shorter than some of them have been. I think where are we five minutes at the moment on this one, and I think this one will effectively be about an hour long. But you know what? It's a special. <laughs> so there we are. <laughs> of course, there's also been those detractors. You know, I I, I um, have not gone through this year without the detractors, the people that have commented that something is, is wrong or I should be doing something another way. I need to do this or should do that. You know, need and should are words that I don't tend to use in my vocabulary unless I actually mean them. So, um, yeah, to those to the thumbs downers, I'm sure actually in some of the cases of the, the thumbs down and we have a sort of fair idea who one or two of the thumbs down are. Um, I've most probably achieved more in a month of a week at the plot than they have achieved in a whole year on their plots. So um, I don't think that's me being smug about it. I think that's just the truth. What you see is what you get with with me and with Richard. Um, you know, and, and what happens at the plot here is what happens at the plot here. If some things don't work, you, you find out about them. Um, if some things come as a surprise because they really do work, you find out about them. So, yeah, you know, um, I've just made a, a few notes. Have I said everything here? Yeah, I think. Oh, no, I haven't mentioned a huge thanks to Fenella, Felicity and Brush, who have appeared throughout the year on A Week at the Plot. Um, sometimes they've appeared in person, in body, if you like. Um, other times they've appeared as they have this morning, or one of them has this morning, in digging up some of our beds. So yesterday I edged the four bed extensions with bricks, and in the third bed extension, there's nothing growing in it at the moment, but in the third bed extension today, there's a nice hole. So um, clearly one of our foxes is is telling us, oh, another bed. Oh, this is lovely. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I think finally, a thank you to everyone who has watched and everyone who's commented, everyone who's given a thumbs up. I hope you've all learnt something. I've certainly learnt things from other people and from you in your comments 
and I really appreciate that. I hope you will enjoy the shorter bits of or shorter uploads of A Week at the Plot going forward. Um, I don't think they'll necessarily be too short, but in watching that first video, it was 15 minutes. And this one, as I say, is going to be about an hour. And some of them, they've generally sat around 40, 45, 50 minutes. So thank you to all of you who have watched right through to the end. Um, you know what fruit to put if you've watched through to the end of this upload. And if you're new to the channel and you don't know what fruit to put, it's bananas. So comment bananas and I'll know you've got to the end of this upload of A Week at the Plot. So I think I will see you on Planet Vegetaria tomorrow with a video. And that will become the first video in the second year of A Week at the Plot. How long these will continue, one doesn't know. You never know things in life, do you? So um, we'll just take it day by day and week by week. We are obviously coming out of lockdown and there are things that I want to clearly do with Richard, like get to see mum at some point in Guernsey. Because it really feels, I mean it is, it feels like a long time. Um, bank holiday weekend, it will be 14 months since I've seen my mum. And um, yeah, apart from one or two video, brief video calls, um, I've had a few photos, but you know, nothing physical and nothing sort of ongoing. But I do talk to mum every day, as most of you know. Anyway, I am going to do some watering because it's possibly so far the worst day of the week. It's not bad by any means, but there's a strong wind out there. There's lots of clouds. The sky is a very pale blue, a grey blue. I don't know if we're going to have that sparkling blue that we've had for other days this week, but um, yeah, we'll know at the end of the day, won't we? Anyway, wherever you are, have a good day. Wherever you are, if you're watching on YouTube, have a great week. And I'll see you again for another A Week at the Plot next week. And who knows what that will bring. Thanks to everyone for everything. Bye.